Welcome to the Middle Room Workshop. Today I'm going to show you how to replace the switchboard on your Nege laser module. Without further ado, let's get into it. Alright, this is the follow-up video to my uh, module repair video which I've uploaded a couple of months ago. Uh, this video was meant to be an integral part of that video, however uh, that would have ended up being a little bit too long and so I've decided to actually split. Now for most users uh, the driver board is the things that should be replaced, um, however for some users like I did I ended up damaging uh, the switch board which is this uh, board that sits below um, then basically I had to go ahead and replace that as well. Um, now one note to give you in advance is that uh, we are going to experience this replacement together. That means that I had no prior experience with this specific laser module. Uh, but as you will see, it is going to be a very simple replacement as well. Um, only a side note, if you have already seen my previous video, uh, about the repair, about the replacement of the driver board is that in addition to the uh, tools listed in that video we will need some thermal paste. As you will see uh, the grey substance that uh, comes through the board is actually thermal paste because there is a thermal sensor beneath um, and so it will be important to have uh, some thermal paste around. Now when buying your thermal paste make sure to buy a thermal paste that is not electrically conductive. Um, as you will see in the video, I'm going to use a multimeter just to verify that we don't have some uh, shorting issues after we are applying the paste. So I'm basically verifying before and after. All right, so without wasting any more time, let's get into the video. Now for this board we will need to basically disassemble uh, this uh, diode block and so again you can use the same hexagonal key. Alright, now this is out. Now this is where the uh, diode sits. Alright, so now uh, I haven't done this uh, yet so we are going to experience it together. However, from what I can see you will not be able to use the same trick that we applied earlier uh, and that is because the pins, uh, the leads that are coming out from the component which sits directly underneath, they've been bent. Okay, this is actually normal. And so we will not be able to uh, pull them right out uh, as we did for the straight pins. So for the purpose here, you will need uh, some additional uh, piece of equipment uh, what I can recommend you, this is what I use in my project, is to have a vacuum pump. Now this is a vacuum pump. This is basically spring loaded and it does exactly what it says. It's basically sucking the tin. Okay, so what you need to do, try to uh, have something to hold this in place. And I will try without for now. What you need to do is to warm up the pin, okay, and then to have this to suck the tin. And then inspect to see if you have to work something more. Now, if you see that this doesn't work, uh, you can add some tin in the first place just so that you can get a bigger bubble, which then it's easier for suction purpose to take it with a uh, pump here. All right. Now this is almost done. Now I can try to pry it off. This is where the knife will come handy. This video is sponsored by Next PCB. As of right now, uh, you get a free prototyping. That is, with zero dollars, you get a one to four layer PCB. If you want to quote, follow the learn more. Instant quote. And if you have a Gerber file, you can upload it right into the site. This will populate all of the fields for you. And you can also get to see your design. So you can double check before sending to manufacturing. 
Alternatively, you can fill in the data yourself and up to four layers, 100 millimeters times 100 millimeters, five pieces with 48 hours build time will cost you absolutely zero. If you are a new user, you will also get a $100 coupon on sign up. So if you're interested, you will find the link in the video description below and you can get your one to four layer uh, prototyping PCB absolutely for free. However, this is still not free. So let me try to do a combination of knife and heating. Okay, now my knife is inside and I can try to lift the right off. And as you can see, I'm pretty much done with this pin. Then we will see how we can actually pull the thing out. Right, let's now go for the other side. All right, so now I see some uh, compound inside and so I don't really know uh, what kind of compound there is. So I'll try to pry this open a little bit with the knife to try to see if I can get this to lift off. And then I will eventually start to apply a little bit of heat. All right. So as you can see, we got this free. And so we are pretty much ready. I just want to verify that this is not indeed some thermal paste because otherwise I will need to apply uh, some thermal paste on it. All right, so uh, while inspecting this, I realized that most likely this uh, is indeed thermal paste, okay? And that is because uh, underneath here, uh, this must be the thermal sensor. And so the only way for the thermal sensor to actually uh, perfectly feel the temperature of the diode which is inside, it is that the whole thing must be filled in with thermal paste. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to clean this up a little bit and then I found a little bit of thermal paste, I'm going to apply this. Now in general, a thermal paste, it's thermally conductive but not electrically. And so this should cause no problem. However, we will try it out uh, with the tester so we can make sure that the two leads coming out of the diode are indeed uh, insulated and we are not shorting it out with a compound paste, okay? So uh, to clean this up, I'm going to use a little bit of isopropylic alcohol. And I'm going to rub on it like so. And now I'm going to excavate just a little bit, just to remove a bit of this thermal paste from the way. Ideally, we should be able to remove it all, but I think that this will not be feasible because I believe that the manufacturer simply filled in the hole. But uh, to remove a little bit of this will help out with the new thermal paste. All right, so I emptied out a little bit the hole. I cleaned a little bit around. Now, ideally, we should take this all apart, but uh, when I've tried to do this, I was only able to remove the lens, but not the entire thing out of it. Uh, and so I'm not really want to mess up with that, okay? Uh, we are going to fill up the hole directly with the uh, thermal paste. But before to do that, let's make sure that these uh, leads are actually conducing only on one direction since this is a diode. So for the purpose, I'll get my multimeter. I'll just turn this on into diode mode. And I'm going to try to see 
Okay, no conduction here. Oops. Let's see from the other way around. All right, so we have conduction in one direction only, okay? And so once we apply the thermal paste, we'll once again verify uh, that we have conduction on one way only. Now I will first remove the initial part, okay, just to be sure that we don't get rubbish inside. And now I'm going to fill in the hole okay and this seems pretty much good and now let's once again try to see if we have changed something okay Whoop. Perfect. So our thermal paste is not conducing, which is what we expected. All right. It is now time to place the switchboard inside. Let me just zoom a little bit so you can see better. Okay. So I will just put it on top like this. And yes. There we go. We are perfectly good to go. It is now time to put everything back in place. So I'm uh, first of all going to bend again the lead here. Okay. And also on the other side, I'll do the same. All right, and this should be pretty much good to go. Now it's time to soldier uh, the, the leads. So let's get ready. Now for the soldiering purpose, uh, bear in mind that this is a high power uh, diet laser. This is a 5.5 watt, so you want your soldier uh, to be done right. Um, so I will first clean a little bit from the top this excess thermal paste. Just don't want to be on the way while we are actually soldiering. All right, so now it is time to soldier. So get your tin, put it into the flux, and now warm up the pod and the terminal here and let it do its job. Right? Let's clean this up. All right, so uh, the module is right now correctly connected and it is now time to reassemble everything and to finish with the, uh, the driver, okay? So first thing first, we are going to reconnect this onto the laser module. Okay, so um, you can put a little bit of thermal paste here to the side if you want. This will help out with the heat dissipation. I will do that later on. So for now, just for demonstration, I'm going to screw everything back. All right, so as you've seen, the replacement is fairly straightforward. Um, 
I know that the video took a little bit longer that's because we were experiencing it along together um, now if you have to replace your driver board uh, I will suggest you to go back or to watch the video that I've published previously uh, where I'm actually covering the uh, driver board replacement which sits on top of this one. Uh, I hope you found this video helpful, informative. If you have any comments, leave them in the comment section below. If you like the video, click the thumb up button below and don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this one. Ciao for now!